today. It may be you. It may be me. It may be someone by your side. By your side. Oh, it may be. Oh, yes, Lord, it may be you. It may be me. There be someone by your side, but the Lord is going to bless someone today, 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 today. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us together this afternoon. Lord, it is by your grace that we are gathered. We commit your word that is about to come. Let us not only be hearers of your word, but be, may we be doers of your word. So speak to us through your servant, Lord. And Lord, take away from me every spirit of self. And let your unction flow to you through this word to your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Today's message is entitled Come Home. A wall Christian. Come home. Hallelujah. A wall Christians. Come home. What does a wall mean? It's a military term that stands for. Uh, away without leave. A, away. W, with. O, out. L, leave. So when a military person says that a, a, a soldier has gone AWOL, it means that person left without permission. It means that person has gone away from wherever he is, he is and he is without permission. Amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, the message is, a war Christians come home. And as I was saying, when a Christian, it, it, uh, when a military person says a military person has gone a war, it means that person is away without leave. It means that person doesn't have permission to go and that person has left. Doesn't have vacation doesn't have permission to leave the base and that person has left and now they have to go and look for that person and bring him back, that soldier, and bring him back. AWOL. It is a very serious crime in the military. But brethren, some of us today are AWOL Christians. We have gone AWOL. We have just left the fold without permission. We are just left. Oh, we are disgruntled. Why? Because many of us are disgruntled. Many of us are feeling uh, dejected. Many of us feel that God has not heard us. Many of us are feeling that God has disappointed us. We were expecting God to do something and he, it hasn't come. We were expecting God to be loving. We don't feel his love no more. We are expecting God to heal us. Oh, the healing is not coming. We are expecting a miracle. The miracle hasn't come. So we feel like God has left us alone. And therefore, we also feel that, hey, if I'm praying and he, does, he won't do it, then I'm also leaving. And we leave. So many of us are dejected. Many of us are disgruntled. Many of us are frustrated. Many of us have backslide. Or backslid into uh, into into uh, going back to the life we used to live, going back to do the same things we used to do. But brethren, today the message is: you a wall Christian, come home, 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 come home. You know, our sister Nana sang this song. Oh, Sister Pepe. Well, she's also Sister Nana. Anyway, so she sang the song that says, Come home, come home, come home, come home. Weary Christians, come home. Amen? Weary Christians, come home, come home, come home. And the words are, Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portal, he's watching and waiting, waiting for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home, come home. He who is weary, come home 
earnestly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. Reverend God is calling you today. Come home, come home, come home. Come home. God wants you to come back. Wherever you were, whatever situation you're going through, God says, come back, come back, come back, come home, come home, come home. Amen. So as Christians, no matter what is going on in our life, we don't give up on God. As Christians, no matter how we feel about the things that we are going through, we don't give up. We don't backslide. We don't become disappointed. We don't become frustrated. We don't become disgruntled. We don't become dejected to the point where we decide, decide that we are no longer going to serve God. We are no longer. Many of us, we are doing that even in our church. We got so disappointed, we said, I won't go to church no more. I won't go to fellowship no more. I won't sing no more. I won't pray no more. I won't read my Bible no more. But God is telling you today, come home. Come home, come home, come home. Come home. And he's softly and tenderly waiting for you to come home. Amen. So we read from Luke chapter 15. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 15. And from verse 1, there are three stories in Luke chapter 15. And the first one is entitled, The Lost Sheep. Amen. The Lost Sheep. And it says, from verse 4, it says, Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open field and go look out for the lost sheep? If you had a hundred sheep and you lost one, do you say, oh, I still got 99, so I'm not going to take care of them. I don't care if the one is lost. You don't do that. A good shepherd does not let that one sheep go. Remember the story of, of David? David says an, a, a lion came and took one of his sheep. Oh, he went and he struggled with the lion and got it back. He could have said it's a lion. So he's letting the lion take that one sheep. Oh, oh it's a lion. I, I'm scared of a lion. No, David was not. He went and he fought and he got his, uh, his sheep back. Amen. So God is looking for you, no matter where you are, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter how dejected you are, no matter how frustrated you are, no matter how, how disappointed you are, no matter your, the anxiety you've gone through, no matter the pain you have gone through, God still says that he loves you. Come back home. And even though he has a lot of other Christians, he still wants you. Because you are just as important as any other Christian. He, you're just as important as anyone who's still in the fold. So any lost, any AWOL Christian, God wants you. He says, come home. Come home, come home, come home. Amen. And the second story, in the second story, we read about the lost coin. And he says, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't he light a lamp and sweep the whole house and starts looking carefully until she finds it? She will light a lamp. And look carefully. Where did I drop my quarter? Where did I drop my money? And you look under every nook and cranny and make sure he finds it. Hallelujah. The, the Lord doesn't want you to be lost. No matter where you are, he's looking for you. He's sweeping the room. He's lighting a candle for you so that you can be fine, found. Oh, so that he can see you and you can come back and be who he wants you to be and do what he wants you to do. The Lord is looking for you as if you are a lost coin, as if you are a lost sheep. Amen. Then the third story in Luke chapter 15 is the one we all know as the prodigal son. And this story, you, any of us have heard it so many times, so let me not go into, into the details. But the crux of the matter is the younger son of a man who had two left, got his inheritance and went and you blew it. Blew it all. You know, but whilst he was there, whilst he was there, he realized that, wow, 
Look at me now eating, taking care of pigs. And the only food I can get to eat is the food I was, that was given to me to give to the pigs. So I got to eat some to sustain. Even in my father's house, servants eat better. I am going back home and I'm going to tell my father, look, make me a servant. Because after all, that's what I'm doing here. I'm a servant, but I don't even have a food, a good food to eat. But I know if I'm your servant here, I will get good food to eat. So don't worry. You don't have to make me my son. You, you have to make me your son. But make me your servant. And I know my life will be better. So son got up and ran home and got home. Where then he came home. But the Bible says when he was afar off. Amen. When he was afar off. That's verse 20. Look, chapter 15 and verse 20. So, so he got up and he went to his father. But whilst he was still a long way off, his father saw him and his father was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. And, he, and the son says to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Then the father says to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put the ring on his finger and sandal on his feet. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you to come. Come home, a war Christian. Anyone who is dejected, anyone who is frustrated, anyone who is disappointed, anyone who feels that the Lord has not done what you want him to do, he still says, come home, come home, come home, come home. Softly and tenderly, he's calling. He's calling for you, you sinner, you backslider, you disappointed. You dejected. Come home. 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 But if it's the verse, verse 6, I want you to see. Look, chapter 15, verse 6. And the same thing is said in verse 9. In the verse 6, in the parable of the lost sheep, he says, When that, when that uh, sheep gets home, that uh, servant, or that master of the sheep, he calls his friends and neighbors together and he says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. In verse 9, when he talks about the, the lost coin, it says, verse 9, And when he, she finds that coin, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost coin. The heaven rejoices when one of us that backslid, that was disappointed, that was dejected, that was frustrated, that one of us that went AWOL, when we come home, heaven rejoices. Amen. When we come home, heaven, heaven, heaven rejoices. Verse 7. Let's read that. He says, I tell you, Luke chapter 15 and verse 7 says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. One who will repent and come home. Heaven throws a party. So that's what happened in the, the story of the prodigal son. You know, the father says, put a robe on his finger. Verse 20, 23, bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let's have a feast. Let's have a party to celebrate. God is waiting for you to come home. There's a party waiting to happen. You AWOL Christian, you're the reason we haven't had our party yet. If you are AWOL, you are the reason we haven't had our party yet. Because if you are here, if you come back home, there'll be a big party for us. Amen. We need to come home. But meanwhile, the oldest son that had been here all this while, working with his father, taking care of the sheep, doing all the things that his father wanted him to do, got hurt, came home and saw the partying going on and got disappointed and got upset. What's all this ruckus? And he hears it and he says, he's told that your brother came home and if your father has had us to throw this party for him. And the older brother gets disappointed. The older brother gets angry. The older brother gets upset. So his father goes to him. 
And the father says, verse 29. Oh, he says to his father, his father, he gets upset. His father went out, verse 30, 28. It says, father went out and pleaded with him. Then he says this to his father. Look, all those years I have been slaving for you. And never disappoint, disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I can celebrate with my friends. But when your son, that son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fucking cow for him. And that's how many of us feel. Many of us, when we are dejected, when we are frustrated, we look at other people and it looks like things are going well for them. Things are going okay for them. They got a good job. They got a good marriage. Everything is fine. They are healthy. And then we are the ones who we think are Christians. We are the ones who are going through crisis. We are the ones going through problems. Nothing seems to be going right. And that's why many of us get disappointed. Many of us get angry. Many of us walk away from the things of the Lord. But his father went to him and he said, this is what the father says, my son, the father said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he is found. He was lost, but he is found. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, blessed in his blood. See, we are, we are, you and I. The Lord Jesus has already died for you and I. He's already shed his blood for you and I. Brethren, let us not continue to live the way we live. Let us not be dis continue to be dejected. Let us not continue to be disappointed. For once we were lost, but now we are found. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now... I see. Brethren, maybe right now you are blind. Maybe one now you feel lost. But brethren, you can be found. The Lord is calling you. Come home. Maybe you were blind. You couldn't see all the goodness of God. You couldn't see all the miracles he's doing around you. You couldn't see all the things he's doing for you. You still think that all oh, things are bad. Things are not going well. But hey, God is calling you. Come home. There is a place for you. Come home, come home, come home, come home, come home. Come home. Ready, let's open our Bibles to Hosea chapter 3. The book of Hosea chapter 3. And let's read something that the book, Hosea chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. And they will come trembling to the Lord. And to his blessing in their last days. Many of us, that's how, what we want to do. We want to wait and wait and wait. And in the last days, when we are in our sick bed, when we are in our last days, when things are not going right, and when and then we want to come to God. But brethren, you and I don't know when we're going to be called. You and I don't know how we're going to be called. If each and every one of us was going to get to our old age and when we are bedridden, and that's when, you see a lot of people, when they lie in that bed, in their sick bed in their last days, they commune with God and they ask God for com com uh, forgiveness. Like the thief on the cross, they say, Lord, forgive me and remember me. And the Lord does. But do you know if you're going to be on your sick bed? I just gave you a testimony of a, of a son of mine that has just had an accident. He could have died instantly. And if he had, then what opportunity does he have to give his life? Since you and I don't know 
how God is going to call us. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. So if you are an AWOL Christian, this is the time for you to come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Many of us give up with the slightest of excuses. Something small happens and we give up. Something small happens and we get disappointed. Oh, the, what we are asking for doesn't come when we think we need it. And so we are disappointed. So we are angry. So we are upset. See, like that, that older brother, he got upset. Nothing his father had done for him mattered. At that very moment, because his father had thrown a party for his younger brother who had gone out and squandered everything, yeah. See, that was his excuse. He walked out. But the father went to him and says, come back home. Come back home. Don't worry. Everything I have is still yours. But then don't worry. God still got you. God is still going to take care of it. You may not be right now. You may not be doing going on in your life the way you want it to go. But God is still walking. And God is still talking. And God is still taking care of you. He says, come home. Come in, come, come, come back, come back, come back. Don't, don't let it, don't let it linger. Amen. So what do you and I need to do? Let's read our Bibles from Acts chapter 3, verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. And it reads, it says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come. From the Lord. Repent your sins. Whatever it is you have done. Whatever has been going on. Repent your sins. Repent your sins. And come home. And if you do. There will be times refreshing will come from the Lord. Amen. Refreshing times are on the way for you. God is about to do something wonderful in your life. God is about to change the circumstances in your life. So, AWOL Christian, come on. Let God throw you a party. Let God take care of the things that you are worried about. Let God take care of your situation. Amen. So then we read from John chapter 15, the gospel of St. John in chapter 15. And he says that I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes. Brethren, don't be pruned by God. Come and bear fruit. Come and be of use. Come and do what God wants you to do. So if you are doing something for the Lord and you have given up, oh, the Bible is saying to you, come home. Come back and do what you were doing. You used to play the drums. You don't want to play no more. You used to sing. You don't want to sing no more. You used to preach. You don't want to preach no more. You used to do, don't broadcast. You don't want to do it no more. Whatever it is that you used to do, come back. Come back and do it. The Lord is looking for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. God is saying you're no longer a servant. You see, the, the, servant, the prodigal son wanted to come home and be a servant. He says, no, no, no. You're still going to be my son. The Bible is telling us that in Jesus' eyes, in God's eyes, you're no longer a servant. You are no longer a servant. You are now a friend. Amen. Hallelujah. In Colossians 19, uh, 1.19, it says you are no longer an alien. You are now part of the family. Amen. And in, in Romans 8.17, it says you are no longer uh, servants, but you are children. You are giant heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. So God is waiting for you. He says, come home. A world Christian, come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Don't let your sins block you. Don't think that, that because you are a sinner, oh, because I went and did something wrong, oh, because I said something wrong, or oh, because I swore, now I'm scared. No, well, what else? What other option do you have? You can't keep living like this. You can't keep being disappointed. You can't keep being this uh, frustrated. You can, come home. 
Leave all that behind and come home. Be like the prodigal son that left everything. He had squandered his money. He had spent it with women. He had done all kinds of things. But he still came home. You too, a wall Christian, come home. A wall Christian, come home. Come home, come home, come home, come home. There's a song that says, Whosoever will may come. Hallelujah. Whosoever will. I don't know the word. I don't know the song uh, very well. But um, the words of the song are, Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Send a proclamation over vale and hill. Tis a loving father calls the wanderer home. Whosoever will may come. So if you are willing to come to the Lord, the Lord is willing to accept you in his fold. Whosoever cometh need not delay. Now the door is open. Enter whilst you may. Jesus is the true and the only living way. Whosoever will may come. Whosoever will. The promise is secure. Whosoever will forever must endure. Whosoever will to us lie forevermore. Whosoever will may come. So if you are an a Christian, if you are willing, come home. The door is open. 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 So in John chapter 14, verse 7, John chapter 14 and verse 7, it says, it says, so if you really know me, you will know my father as well. For now on, you do not know him. You have not seen him. Amen. Hallelujah. From now on, you do not know my father. So don't let your heart be troubled, verse 1. You believe in God. Believe also in me. That's Jesus talking. And in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and I'll take you to be with me. That you will also be where I am. And you know the way to the place that I am going. I am the way, verse 6, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. Give your life to Jesus if you haven't given it. And if you have backslide, if you have gone away astray, if you've gone AWOL, come back. Jesus will take you home. 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 And before I end, let me read you one last verse. And it says, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in the sight of God. Rather, through the laws, we become conscious of our sins. So through the law, we become conscious of our sins. So let us come home. Now we have become conscious. So you see, the Bible says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 but all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that comes by Jesus Christ. The redemption comes by Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Give your life to Christ, Jesus if you haven't, or if you have backslide or backslid. Give your life back to Jesus. If you are disappointed, if you are dejected, come home. Come home. May the Lord bless each and every one of us. And may we come home, those of us who are AWOL. May we come home, those of us who have given up. May we come home, those of us who are disappointed. And may the Lord take care of us and lead us to his grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.